Epsom salt, also known as magnesium sulfate, has been touted as a remedy for various plant ailments and a booster for overall plant health. However, there's also a lot of confusion and misinformation about its effectiveness and proper usage. Join us as we delve into the science behind Epsom salt, examine its potential benefits, and provide practical insights on how to use it in your garden. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or just starting out, this video aims to provide you with the knowledge you need to make informed decisions about incorporating Epsom salt into your gardening practices. Epsom salt, chemically known as magnesium sulfate, is a naturally occurring mineral compound composed of magnesium, sulfur, and oxygen. It derives its name from the town of Epsom in Surrey, England, where it was first discovered in Mineral Springs. Epsom salt has been used for centuries for various purposes, including medicinal and agricultural applications. In gardening, Epsom salt is primarily valued for its magnesium content. Magnesium is an essential nutrient for plant growth and plays a vital role in numerous physiological processes, including chlorophyll production, photosynthesis, and enzyme activation. It is particularly important for the development of healthy leaves, stems, and overall plant vigor. Sulfur, the other component of Epsom salt, is also beneficial for plants, as it contributes to the formation of amino acids and proteins, which are essential building blocks for plant growth and development. Additionally, sulfur aids in nutrient uptake and improves soil structure and microbial activity. While Epsom salt is often promoted as a remedy for magnesium deficiency in plants and a general tonic for plant health, it's essential to understand its limitations and proper usage. In the following sections, we'll explore the potential benefits of Epsom salt for plants, as well as considerations and best practices for its application in gardening. For many generations, gardeners have employed Epsom salt, attesting to its ability to promote bushier plant growth, increase flower production, and enhance color vibrancy. Additionally, it is reputed to aid in seed germination and act as a natural deterrent against pests like slugs. However, the University of Minnesota Extension Service advises against Epsom salt application unless a magnesium deficiency in the soil is confirmed. Excessive usage can potentially damage both plants and soil health. How do you know when to use Epsom salts in your garden? Over time, magnesium levels in the soil may deplete unless replenished regularly. Before considering Epsom salt application for your plants, it's advisable to submit a sample of your garden soil to your county extension service for testing, specifying your concerns. For potted plants, rather than sending soil samples, observe for symptoms of nutrient deficiencies. For instance, plants displaying a greenish-yellow or entirely yellow appearance likely require sulfate. Alternatively, if leaves exhibit yellowing between the veins, while the veins remain green, this condition known as intervenal chlorosis may indicate a need for more magnesium. Identifying the precise cause of plant issues can be challenging due to various factors such as soil pH and weather conditions, but testing your soil is often the first step. Certain plants do not favor Epsom salt due to their limited magnesium requirements or sufficient magnesium uptake from the soil. These plants include beans and leafy vegetables, coniferous trees, and tropical palms. Additionally, insect-eating plants like pitcher plants, sundews, and Venus flytraps are unsuitable for Epsom salt application. These plants have adapted to thrive in nutrient-poor soils, and even small amounts of Epsom salt can be detrimental to their health. Vegetables like peppers, tomatoes, and flowering plants such as roses are known to appreciate magnesium. However, it's essential to conduct a soil test before applying it. While some gardeners attribute bitter-tasting tomatoes to magnesium deficiency, excessive use can be detrimental to their health. Some gardeners have adopted certain techniques using Epsom salt to enhance their gardening success, including the practice of adding a scoop of Epsom salt into each tomato planting hole. This method is believed by some to prevent blossom end rot, a common issue. However, it's time to dispel this misconception as Epsom salt does not effectively address blossom end rot. In fact, it may exacerbate the problem. Blossom end rot occurs due to a deficiency of calcium in the plant. Epsom salt, consisting of magnesium sulfate, lacks calcium entirely. When Epsom salt is added to the soil, it can potentially increase the occurrence of blossom end rot because magnesium and calcium ions compete for absorption by the plant. The presence of excess magnesium can inhibit the absorption of calcium, further contributing to the development of blossom end rot. To combat blossom end rot effectively, 
it's crucial to focus on watering practices rather than soil amendments. Most soils typically contain sufficient calcium, especially in regions like the northern United States. Consistent and adequate watering is essential for facilitating calcium uptake by the plant. Maintaining proper irrigation habits involves avoiding extremes of soil moisture, such as waterlogging or drought. Mulching can help retain moisture levels in the soil, promoting optimal conditions for calcium absorption. When cultivating, take care not to disturb the roots of the tomato vines excessively, as these roots play a vital role in calcium absorption. Additionally, be cautious with fertilization, particularly avoiding overuse of ammoniacal nitrogen fertilizers, which can compete with calcium uptake. Instead, opt for fertilizers containing calcium nitrate for better results. Monitor the growth of the tomato vines, aiming for healthy, but not excessively lush foliage. Lush foliage can exacerbate blossom end rot as actively growing leaves may prioritize calcium uptake over the developing fruits. It's advisable to refrain from additional fertilization until after the first fruits have set and to remove any suckers that may divert energy from fruit development. In some cases, calcium sprays may offer potential benefits. A solution of calcium nitrate mixed with water can be sprayed directly onto the fruits, focusing on dime-sized or smaller tomatoes two to three times a week. However, the effectiveness of calcium sprays may vary, and further research or experimentation may be necessary to determine their efficacy in addressing blossom end rot. Highly concentrated Epsom salt solutions can indeed kill weeds, sometimes combined with vinegar for increased potency. However, caution must be exercised as Epsom salt water can harm nearby plants if they absorb it through their roots or if the mist lands on them during spraying. Whatever you're using it for, it's not recommended to apply Epsom salt directly from the package. Instead, it should be diluted in water first. After dilution, you can either drench the roots of your plants or spray it on the foliage. However, avoid spraying on hot or sunny days to prevent foliage scorching. There are various recommended formulas for applying Epsom salt to plants. A simple method involves adding one tablespoon of Epsom salt per gallon of water and using it in your watering can once or twice a month. For frequent watering, maintain the ratio of one tablespoon per gallon. Epsom salt can also be applied as a foliar spray with a recommended dosage of two tablespoons per gallon of water once a month. For more precise application, the Epsom Salt Council offers specific recommendations. For houseplants, apply two tablespoons of Epsom salts per gallon of water once a month. Shrubs, evergreens, rhododendrons, and azaleas. Use one tablespoon of Epsom salt per nine square feet and pour it slowly over the root zone every two to four weeks. For your lawn, evenly spread three pounds of Epsom salt per 1,250 square feet of lawn, or dilute it with water from a sprinkler system or garden hose. For most trees, spread two tablespoons per nine square feet over the root zone three times a year. For bare root roses, before planting, soak the bare root roses in one cup of Epsom salt per gallon of tepid water. Also, add a tablespoon of Epsom salt to each hole when planting. To give your entire garden benefits, sprinkle one cup of Epsom salt per 100 square feet over the soil and mix it in before planting. Add if you're thinking about incorporating Epsom salt into your gardening rituals, be sure to consider these factors. Soil testing. Conduct soil testing to determine if your soil is deficient in magnesium. Epsom salts are primarily used to supplement magnesium in the soil so it's essential to confirm the need for this nutrient before application. Plant requirements. Understand the specific needs of your plants. While some plants benefit from Epsom salt applications, others may not require additional magnesium or may be sensitive to its effects. Research the requirements of your plants to ensure that Epsom salt is a suitable fertilizer for them. Dosage. Determine the appropriate dosage of Epsom salts based on soil test results and plant requirements. Avoid over-application, as excessive amounts of magnesium can harm plants and soil quality. Application Methods Choose the appropriate method for applying Epsom salts based on your gardening preferences and the needs of your plants. Epsom salts can be applied directly to the soil, dissolved in water for foliar spraying, or used as a soak for roots depending on the desired outcome. Timing Apply Epsom salts at the right time to maximize their effectiveness. For soil incorporation, apply before planting or during periods of active growth. For foliar spraying, apply during the early stages of plant growth or when magnesium deficiency symptoms are observed. 
Monitoring. Monitor plant response and soil conditions after Epsom salt application. Look for signs of improvement in plant vigor, foliage color, and fruit production, as well as any adverse effects, such as leaf burn or soil alkalinity. Adjust application rates and timing as needed based on plant performance and soil test results. In conclusion, while Epsom salt can offer potential benefits for plants when used appropriately, it's crucial to approach its application with care and consideration. Soil testing, understanding plant requirements, proper dosage, and monitoring plant response are key factors in maximizing the effectiveness of Epsom salt in your garden. By following these guidelines and considering the specific needs of your plants, you can harness the potential benefits of Epsom salt to promote healthy growth and enhance the vitality of your garden.